Good morning. I'm, uh, my name is Pierre Emmanuel Thoman. I teach geopolitics in uh, in France, and uh, my specialty uh, was uh, Franco-German uh, relations and the European project. But now I uh, am um, in the process of trying to understand uh, global geopolitics. And so, because I'm a strong believer in the European project, I think Europeans need an alliance between different nations. But I think uh, the European Union project is not anymore the right platform to uh, protect our interests, our sovereignty, and our position, geopolitical positioning in the world. It should be reformed, or we should do something else. And first of all, also, I'm very honored to be invited to share with you uh, my ideas and uh, with uh, such a uh, uh, presence of uh, presidents, uh, deans of universities, students, uh, journalists. Uh, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure for me to be here. So my, uh, uh, my presentation is about uh, the, uh, uh, to make a global geopolitical diagnosis and then to uh, reflect on the consequences on, uh, at the regional level, uh, the Balkans and especially the uh, uh, Serb Republic. And uh, because uh, the geopolitical approach, from my point of view, in France, geopolitics is part of geography. This is why we do maps, because we are looking from the spatial angle uh, to, uh, to understand the, the dynamic of uh, any conflict of uh, geopolitical configuration. And uh, uh, also, very, I'm personally very interested in applied geopolitics. I would like geopolitics to be used by politicians to reposition my country, France, but also with alliances at uh, a European level, especially I think France should reconnect strongly with Serbia, Republic Srpska. We have a historical link, very strong, and the French diplomacy has made, uh, uh, unfortunately, many mistakes uh, within this European project to with our exclusive Franco-German uh, couple, as we say, which led us to align ourselves on uh, German-American Europe, actually. And I think it's not anymore the European Europe as the goal uh, wanted to promote. So I think uh, this is a, a task of applied geopolitics to uh, make a diagnosis of a situation and then advise, propose new scenarios and uh, uh, my modest contribution is uh, when I teach at university, is I explain, I show my maps, and uh, I will, uh, of course, uh, explain that I was uh, here, that uh, I've met uh, people from the uh, uh, Serb Republic, and uh, you need to be known on the map of Europe again. And uh, also I write articles, and I will write articles about the need uh, of these uh, alliances at a European level. And uh, first of all, I would like to say that uh, uh, when you, uh, the, the, the conflict in uh, Yugoslavia until the breakup of Yugoslavia, actually, it was based on the biggest fake news of last century. And only in France, for example, in mainstream media, because there were some books of uh, academics who wrote about it, but most of the public don't know the real story. And only uh, in a, a few years ago, there was the first article in Le Monde Diplomatique that, you know, the bombing of uh, Yugoslavia in 99 was based on the biggest fake news of last century. But, you know, it comes very late, but it's very recent. But it's what uh, I think, as a geopolitician, uh, my ambition is to... Um, uh, write articles and say to my students and also to re, um, write with other academics and experts, we have to rewrite the sto this story. We, we have to say the truth of what happened because for you, uh, in order of a, a, a Serbian nation and a Euro Republic or Serbia to be put on the map of Europe, to be part of a European concert of nations in a new Europe, you, we need to do this work to uh, tell the truth of what happened. This is a big uh, hard work, but we need, we need to do this also, this uh, uh, analysis and say what happened uh, because to understand the current situation. So, uh, you know, I, I was in 2000, 
I was in, in Belgrade. It was one year after the bombardment. I went to the museum of uh, East, of uh, military museum, and I remember when I watched this map of bombing, and this is myself in 2000. So I was aware already of uh, uh, this uh, situation, and this is why I'm interested in learning from you also, you, how uh, you, you will have a, a, how you position yourself, because I, I strongly believe we need to reconnect between uh, my country, but also other European countries, and uh, Serbia and Republika Srpska. The current situation, let's do a global diagnosis. The current crisis in Ukraine, uh, from my point of view, is a uh, direct consequence of uh, the, the uh, Western American strategy, uh, 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 centrally, uh, to encycling Eurasia. Because uh, uh, United States strategy is to uh, prevent any power on the Eurasian continent to emerge and to challenge their own uh, supremacy. This is why you have a European rimland and the Indo-Pacific rimland. And of course, we are all in this European rimland, uh, which is very important for the United States to control. Actually, this is their last zone of influence. This is why they can be very aggressive to keep it in this new uh, multipolar world emerging. And uh, if we look at the, the different... Uh, uh, phases of the spatial orders, the geopolitical configuration. When USSR uh, was uh, um, in, in the bipolar world, of course, there was a confrontation between uh, NATO and USSR. When USSR dissolved, uh, there was a retreat of territory. And then uh, after this phase, the uh, United States, with its main allies in NATO, tried to encycle Russia until Central Asia, with a partnership of peace, and also with regime changes, uh, pressure on all countries we didn't align with this new Nepola vision. And, of course, uh, the most important phase of this unipola world started in Yugo by breaking up Yugoslavia. That was the first phase. You were the theater. You were the theater of... Uh, um, the laboratory for the unipolar world. And after, they continue to expand the Euro-Atlantic exclusive uh, domination uh, with many regime changes until they reach the border of Russia. And this is a very dangerous situation because, of course, uh, they uh, now touch uh, Ukraine, which is part of uh, their real uh, Russian identity, uh, and to, to, to break up Russia in the future, and in the same way as they uh, detach uh, uh, Serbia from uh, its uh, um, historical lands uh, in, in Kosovo, for example, but also by breaking up uh, Yugoslavia into pieces in order to reduce uh, Serbian power and at the same time Russian power as well, to roll them back out of, of, of this zone. And uh, uh, Russia reacted actually, uh, starting with uh, uh, by implementation of a Munich speech of Putin in uh, 2007 uh, in Munich, uh, with a reaction in, uh, uh, for example, in uh, uh, Georgia war in 2008, uh, where uh, it was a strong sign of a message not to enlarge NATO anymore, uh, uh, also a message to Ukraine, but the West didn't want to understand this. And uh, with a coup, coup d'etat in Maidan in 2014, and of course uh, Russia could not let Crimea, uh, which is a pillar of its security on the southern flank, uh, let it uh, autonized, uh, let it to under NATO influence on Ukraine as well. And uh, after uh, Russia demanded a new European security architecture to negotiate the stop of NATO enlargement. Actually, this was an idea also supported by, by France uh, for a long time. De Gaulle always uh, wanted a new European security architecture uh, to have a, a, a European project, a European Europe, which is balancing between uh, the US and USSR. And today, I think, uh, a European, uh, new European security architecture to, have a, to promote European interest between China and the US. But of course, it's a Europe from Brest to Vladivostok. And um, also, uh, and then, uh, 
uh, Americans refused to negotiate. Unfortunately, France and Germany uh, aligned themselves with Amer American uh, objectives. They didn't uh, promise to, to stop NATO. And then, uh, I'm not going into detail, but this uh, conflict started this operation as a preventive war because Ukrainian forces were on the verge to uh, try to regain uh, uh, Donbass and Crimea. They said it uh, explicitly. Um, so um, the, uh, the, the American strategy is, of course, to fragment Europe into uh, uh, small states in order to keep its own hegemony, and it uses uh, front states to do the job because they don't want to fight on two fronts. Uh, they are not strong enough. And this is why they use uh, Poland, Turkey, uh, uh, countries to try to destabilize uh, and create an arc of crisis around Russia. And of course, the confrontational zones, which are very important, are the Balkans, Caucasus, Central Asia. And this is why you have to be very careful, because you are on the front, and to n net, uh, let yourself uh, aligned in, into political blocks because it will be uh, to use you, to use you as an instrument against Russia and China. It's a very dangerous situation because if, if we, uh, after the uh, rollback of Russia, the ultimate goal of the most extremist Atlantis is to cut Russia into pieces, like they did with Yugoslavia. This is the same, the same project. Uh, to divide the Eurasian continent into pieces to maintain their own hegemony. This is what, that was a, a European Parliament uh, uh, conference in Brussels, financed by European Parliament, to, to promote this. This is just amazing. And uh, I'm surprised of German, French, they know this is not in their interest, and they don't say anything so far. Um, this is a reaction of Russia with maps and geopolitical maps. I, I, I changed the, uh, uh, the configuration of a map. Uh, this is a, these are a polar maps, and you have to turn the map to see the positioning and the angle uh, from Russia. And they feel encircled by American bases, and of course they try to break this encirclement. And this is what they do in uh, operation in Ukraine, is stop this en encirclement policy. And by my point of view, they will succeed. Because they, unfortunately, there will be a lot of casualties. This is war. But NATO, from now, cannot be an offensive weapon to continue to enlarge this uh, uh, um, Washington domination of the world. NATO uh, will only have a use of uh, containment, and this is already a big achievement. Uh, also, at global level, uh, alliances are changing. And uh, this is actually Russia succeeding in having troops in all ex-USSR countries to stop enlargement, except Baltic states. At global level, the configuration is uh, maybe the most important of this conflict. It's a global conflict. It's not a, a, a global war, it's a global conflict because everybody is involved with a, a, a hybrid war with a military between a proxy Ukraine against Russia, but also economic war at global level. And actually, when we see the map, uh, only what we call the collective West, uh, 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 NATO member states and Australia and uh, South Korea, Japan, apply sanction, uh, sanctions against Russia. The rest of the world does not. The world is already multipolar. This is the main achievement. And we see on the map, actually, this is Europe, which is vassalized to the uh, European Union, vassalized to NATO. And actually, we are isolated in the world. Between uh, Eurasia and Africa, we are isolated. That's not Russia who is isolated. That's the that's reality of a map. And uh, in long-term perspectives, uh, we have, after the fall of communism, we have German reunification and Russian reunification. Uh, because with the fall of uh, communist ideology, the, the, the border started to move again. Uh, this is the history of Europe. And uh, because of, uh, um, some uh, Atlantist experts say, oh, this is, we should not change border, this is a scandal that the border changed in, the, in, uh, uh, um, in Crimea, for example. Over the, well, we, 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 with the fall of USSR, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, borders change. More 20,000 kilometers of border change already. And it's going to continue. 
That's the sense of history. And after German reunification, Russian reunification also, with Crimea, Donbass, and every, every nation has the right to self-determination, not to reunify according to its own uh, uh, culture, to its own uh, uh, historical territory. And I think this is your right for self-determination. And uh, uh, maybe in the future you will have a referendum, uh, maybe, I don't know. But I think this is your right, like, like they did in Donbass, like they did in Crimea. Uh, uh, I think the Serbian people have a right to determine themselves in, in Srpska Republika and to choose your alliances. That is the future. This is a sense of history. Like we let other nations reunify, you should do the same, I think, from my point of view, for your own status, and to be again at, uh, central on the map of Europe uh, in the new European concept of power. And especially with EU, uh, EU is not the right platform anymore to do this, but more bilateral alliances, a multivectorial uh, policy, foreign policy. So, um, Actually, uh, the European project, I'm still in, uh, uh, very much in, uh, in favor of a European project, but not based on this EU vassalized to NATO and uh, as a sort of Euro-Atlantis exclusive uh, um, model. I think this is over in the multipolar world. If this is obsolete. And the European Union, actually, because we are in crisis, because we have Franco-German rivalry again at the center of a project, and uh, with a uh, fragmentation of EU, actually, the, the British already get out. And uh, the only solution for EU to maintain itself to its line, to be a vassal of NATO, and to become a sort of uh, instrument of Washington power against Russia and China. This is not our interest, our geopolitical interest, if we want to be sovereign and have stability and have a, a Europe from uh, Brest to Vladivostok and cooperate on each other based on European civilization. So the, there are two uh, solutions. Uh, unfortunately, on the uh, up of the map on the left, this is the Greater West under uh, Washington rule, um, and uh, is to cut uh, ourselves from uh, Russia, China, and there is a fragmentation of the Eurasian continent and fragmentation of Europe, and you are at the front, unfortunately. And uh, this uh, means in the Greater West will be always a periphery here. But the alternative solution is a new European security treaty or arrangement in the future. I know now it's difficult, but that's the future we have to look where each European nation has its place and to make the balance between the United States and China in order uh, no, um, no American Chinese condominium can control us. That's why we have to, France, I think, have to reconnect to counterbalance this Franco. Uh, German axis, exclusive axis now. I think it should be stay, but not be exclusive with alliances with Italy, Spain, Serbia, Srpska Republika, Hungary, Russia again. So, uh, what are the consequences for your region, for uh, Srpska Republika, for Serbia? This is, uh, you know, I, when I was in, in, in uh, Belgrade in 2000, I, I uh, I had all the collection of his postal cards uh, after the bombardments, and uh, like uh, actually, you Serbian nation, you are you are the, uh, uh, like uh, the Gaulois in uh, against the Roman Empire, and uh, I think the, the role you play, I think France should role, play this role as well. That's why I admire uh, your positioning because this is very brave, and this is you you apply the Gaullist approach. And uh, if you look at uh, um, this geopolitical configuration, there is a triple, uh, triple uh, encyclement policy uh, from uh, the uh, NATO nations uh, under uh, Washington leadership. When I say Washington leadership, because this is the sort of the, the small circles of neoconservatives in Washington. But we are American people, maybe more in uh, other Republican parties who do disagree with policy as well and who, like, who accept, I think, being more uh, isolationist, who accept a multipolar world. We, these people we have to also to connect, to make uh, alliances at global level, to, to, act, to manage the multipolar world which is emerging. But so far, uh, the policy of these neoconservatives is the encyclopedia Eurasia, as I told you, then on the second map 
is to isolate the uh, Western Balkans as the last zone of where uh, they want to exert, uh, to apply their hegemony, and of course to, uh, to encycle. Encyclement is already done, but they don't control all the territory. And the last project is, of course, uh, to encycle uh, Serbia, uh, Bosnia to take it NATO EU, and of course the objective is to cut Serbia from Srpska Republika, from Kosovo, uh, from your uh, historical uh, env uh, land and environment to finish the job. So the question is, in the future, um, what, uh, what po geopolitical positioning should you have uh, as a, if, if, uh, uh, to, to, as an advice? Uh, well, we can only make uh, some hypotheses, but I think Let's um, imagine you enter uh, EU-NATO. Let's imagine this scenario, uh, promoted by uh, Brussels. And, uh, well, the problem is they don't want to enlarge EU on NATO to Bosnia. Bosnia already is a structure to, uh, to prevent you, to connect you to Serbia, and to have your own in sovereignty and independence. And it's to use you use you as a geopolitical instrument once you are inside uh, uh, to cut you from your traditional alliances like Russia but also uh, China and uh, to, to use you as an instrument for uh, this uh, Atlantis hegemony. So you will lose sovereignty. And in addition to this, let's look at the, this situation today where uh, everybody is focusing on Ukraine. They promise enlargement to Ukraine, which is totally crazy. This is not in French interest, because it will, uh, will move the center of geopolitical gravity more to uh, Germany, Poland, uh, uh, Ukraine. Imagine within EU a block of, uh, on some policies of Germany, uh, Poland, Ukraine. Well, Mediterranean countries like France, Spain, Italy, they are eliminated from the game. But also this uh, promise, they cannot... Uh, fulfill, because it will make explode EU, actually. Maybe it's a good thing, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it's not going to be possible. Uh, France will more or less try to slow down and block. The, the, my worry is France always aligned itself. It was against enlargement, but aligned itself. For example, they accepted Croatia enlargement uh, under a German, uh, German push for this, but uh, France should have blocked and say, no, we have to talk about all the Balkans, Serbia included, in order to have a balance. They didn't, unfortunately. And uh, uh, so uh, if you go into EU, maybe you, uh, there will be some investments, but it will only uh, uh, be slower than, uh, uh, less than expected by all the money will go to Ukraine now. And the EU budget is not enough to do this. So I think uh, it's not a good thing. You, uh, uh, at the minimum, you, you should wait, I think, and, uh, and not uh, accept uh, uh, enlargement. And in addition to this, uh, maybe they will uh, try to, to speed on, on, on Ukraine, and uh, you'll be left out as a secondary status. If you enter EU, you will have a secondary status. You will not have a financing like Spain or Poland had. You will not have a power of Poland or whatever. You will have no commissioner. You will be colonized. This, uh, I, I, and I already France, which has a pillar of this European project, now is a secondary status between the uh, US and Germany and, and even maybe Poland with this war in Ukraine. This is not acceptable. This is not balance of power. Uh, well, I think uh, I have a lot to say, but I think I'm going to stop here because uh, I think the future is multivectorial policy. Also to uh, even invent, we have to be innovative, to invent uh, new organizations maybe, where uh, Council of Europe, uh, Russia was expelled, so I think it's useless. We have to create new organizations uh, outside NATO EU to, for a rebirth to Europe on, on the, a new balance of power, not integration, but uh, a, a Europe of uh, cooperation based on our, our different culture, because Europe is diversity. It should not be Westernized, which is Americanization, actually. And uh, as I said at the beginning, the work of academics and experts, and I would like to contribute to this, is to rewrite already what happened. By pe students, people should know what happened here, the fake news. 
and uh, promote again you, you, uh, your republic to be at the center of a map and uh, uh, to, uh, to be seen in Europe as important because you have a very strategic place, you have a very nice culture, and we should recognize, and especially during these last 20 years, the Serbian nation has been ostracized in Europe. This is a huge scandal, and it should be said. Thank you for your attention.